G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so very good to see you. Happy New Year. I am recording this mere hours before the new year comes in. And perhaps by the time you see it, it will be the new year, or perhaps it will be before. Depends where you are in the world. This is really to say hi and to say thank you. It's been an amazing year. I've absolutely loved the community and all that we are creating and building together. It is so exciting. It is so wonderful to have you out there. Now, since I last recorded, which was before Christmas, I have been out shooting here with the Viltrox 85mm 1.8. Yes, I have. And I had it side by side on the Z6 and the Z6 II with the 85mm 1.8 SZ mount native lens from Nikon. And I have to say, so far, early first look, having a bit of a play, I'm impressed. It is behaving very similarly. There's only one point I can come up with so far is that when detaching it from the mount, when detaching it, it, um, it, it just sticks slightly. I'm not sure what that is, and perhaps this is an early pre-production model. I don't really know. Other than that, I find it to be brilliant. Just look at those gorgeous aperture blades in there. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some images and video shot with this just in the last few days. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really exciting. I hope people are excited regardless of whether, you know, third party should be involved or not. I just think it's a really good thing for people who wanna buy third party lenses to have autofocus native Z mount opportunities. And as we've said before, this is the very first one that's a native Z mount with autofocus. So I'm gonna be showing images from this lens during this video, just randomly. The next thing that I wanted to talk about, this is just, as I said, it's a hi, it's a thank you, and a bit of news is the photo competition. Now, I've had so many entries so far and I'm so excited and thank you so much. Technically, the final day is in, say, the next 24 hours. I'm not gonna be super strict by that. If you need to get something in over the next day or two, I would love to see it. The photo competition is this. The theme is freedom. You can interpret that absolutely however you want. The prize to one person sent anywhere in the world is for a roughly 90 centimeter or three foot print on the long edge. And it'll be about somewhere between 50 and 60 centimeters or two feet on the short edge. I will print that print. We will make a video about it and then I will send it to that person and you will know who you are. Don't forget the competition let's get entries in say before final time wherever it is in the world probably hawaii let's say the 2nd of january so three more days for you to get your freedom photography competition images in which i will be printing the winner now i won't be announcing that for a while because mark and i will be judging that together and currently mark is on holidays which is absolutely fantastic so a quick note for those in Melbourne, the gallery is currently closed until Mark is back and that is the week after next. So that's all of that news. We've got the Viltrox, we've got the competition. What else is going on in the world? A thank you everybody so kindly for responding in such a wonderful way to the fact that an orange book cover exists. I should have got one for shooting, shouldn't I? I don't think I have one here. Yes, there are a few left, and it is absolutely true that in the past, when the book was first released, the only way to get one was to be given one. Now, it wasn't just to be given one by me, but the idea behind it was that, let's say you're a corporate, you're a business, and you wanna give a gift that no one can buy in a retail shop. A corporate business would buy 10 boxes of books, which was, say, 70 books, and then they would give them away. And it'd be like, wow, you can't buy these in any shops. So that was the idea behind it. It was for corporate gift giving, or for me to give. That was the two options. What I'm gonna announce is, seeing as I originally produced 10,000 books in total, and I'm probably down to something like the last two or 300, which is an astonishing 
achievement from my perspective because this is a $100 coffee table book, almost $100 coffee table book in this country. It's a significant thing. I don't know how many oranges I have left. I think there's probably only something like six boxes of them, which means there might be say 50, something like 50 orange books left in the world. I'm going to I'm going to put them up on my website so that you can purchase them. And what I will do with for these books is I will hand sign them. So if anybody would like to have an orange book of which there are very few out there in the world, I will have it on the website for sale. I will hand sign it for you. I'll even put your name on it. I'll say to Bob or to Mary or to Kate, whatever you'd like on there, I can sign it for you. Because the response has been amazing. So thank you. Thank you for that amazing response to the orange book. And for those asking how can they get hold of an orange book, I will be putting it on the website. And yes, I can sign them for you and put your name on it if you would like. Let me know in the notes on the website or send me an email from the website. Either way will work. So that's the orange book. And here we are. Here we are at the end of 2020. For the last, I think, 10 months, we have been putting out something like 12 to 15 videos per month. So something in the vicinity of 150 videos have been created this year. That's massive. That's basically what I've done in this year it equates to more than what I achieved in the previous three years. But it was only this year that I actually turned my shoulder fully into this channel and said, yes, I love it. So I want to again say thank you to the community. Thank you to everybody out there. I love talking about photography. I love theorizing about the business side of photography. Not only me as in a photographer, but also actually, you know, what a Sony, Canon, Nikon, Leica, Fuji, Olympus, Pentax, Hasselblad, have I forgotten anyone? What are they all up to? What are they doing? What does the future look like for all these different companies? I think it's really interesting. And to repeat, I only really like to talk about things that I know, that I use, that I have been doing for a long time. So yes, this is, I suppose, a more Nikon-centric channel. But it doesn't mean I haven't used many other cameras. And those that are new to the channel, you can watch this video up here where I went through all the cameras that I've ever owned. And you would know from that video that I've actually photographed with quite a lot of different cameras over my career. Um, probably something like half of the mainstream cameras ever made. And I was cleaning up my old office, which you guys would have seen a little while ago. Still had a couple of things to get out of there. And look what I found. I found two of the cameras that I couldn't find for that previous video. And here is my original Pentax P30. It's hard to believe I've still got it. Um, I think it needs a battery. I tried to make it work, but anyway. So I had the K1000 and then I had this camera and it's from something like 1986, 87, 88. Did anyone have a Pentax P30? Please let me know out there. But I also found my actual, my first ever medium format. It cost me $200 back in like 1992 or something. But there you go. It probably still works. So this here, this is my beautiful old Bronica 120. I even think I forgot to mention it in that film because I forgot that I had it. So that means that I've had two medium format 120 uh, cameras. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you these old cameras. The whole point I'm bringing this up is to say, I love what we've talked about. Yes, there's a Nikon Focus, but interestingly, from my perspective, I'd like to talk about everything if I could, if I had the time and I had the resources. Now I don't have, I probably have the time, but I don't actually have the resources to have all of these different cameras and, and use them and test them. And that's something that may change in the future over time, but I really enjoy talking about everything. And I'm not interested in brand wars. What I'm interested in is in my use case, your use case, what's your budget, what can you afford to spend, and how does legacy impact your decision making and the system you might, not, you might end up being in. At the end of the day, as we've talked about so many times, for 90, perhaps more than 90% of photographers, you can pretty much buy any camera 
in 2020 and it'll fit 90% of people's uses, use cases. And then from there, you just need to decide. You might have a more specialized, a more high speed, a more low light, a more dynamic range. Uh, you might have those sort of different needs. And then based on what need is most important to you, then you go to a system from there. So genuinely, I'm interested in talking about everything. I'd, I'd like to hope to think that uh, the audience out there is interested in everything as well. And so in 2021, I wanna be able to talk about any other camera brand and hopefully we can explore, discuss and understand all of these different products because everything has pros and cons. It's as simple as that. And for one set of people or one group or one channel to suggest that anybody's failed, well, from my personal perspective, I think that's where a lot of these narratives go wrong. I think every camera has its advantage and every camera has its disadvantages. And again, you just choose which way you're gonna go based on use case, budget, and legacy. And I really look forward to what 2021 has in store for all of us. Fingers crossed that what's going on in the world starts to get ironed out with the vaccination that is starting to roll out around the world and that we all begin to enjoy our lives, our cities, travel and photography again. We're all certainly very, very much looking forward to that. All right, thank you so much. If this is your first time here, it is so lovely to meet you and I would love to see you again, so please subscribe. Please share this video, please like it. All right, everybody, well, the very best. Have the most happiest of New Year's and I will see you on the other side. And in the immortal words of John McLean, we would like to say yippee-ki-yay to 2020.